Finding the inverse Laplace transform requires a nasty complex integration, which we rather avoid. We have a table which gives us several inverse Laplace transforms. In this video, you will see that we can do if our function is capital G of S is not directly in the table. But if it is in the table, if we shift S over a constant C. So if we can write our capital G of S as capital F of S minus C, where capital F is in our table. In this case, we can also use our table to transform our capital G of S back. This method allows us to transform back a whole new class of functions. So let us take a look how this works in this video. We will do so starting with an example. So let us take this g of t. g of t equals t times e to the power ct. And we will compute capital G of s in this case, just to get a feel how this is going to work. So what do we need to do? Capital G of s, so we need to integrate our g of t, multiply by e to the power minus ts, and integrate from 0 to infinity over t. So there we go. Uh, we uh, rewrite a bit, uh, uh, bring those two together in one exponential. And now uh, we integrate by parts, integrate the exponential and leave the t, so that's this part between the boundaries, minus, and leave the antiderivative times the derivative of t, which is 1, so minus the second integral over here. Now the first part is 0, for t is 0, we have a t over here, so for t is 0, we get 0. For t to infinity, this exponential goes to 0 if s is bigger than c. c. And the second part, now we have just an exponential that which we can integrate. Here we have the antiderivative. Again, the upper boundary goes to 0 uh, due to s bigger than c. And for the lower boundary, we get uh, a minus 1 over c minus s squared with the additional minus sign. It gives us a 1 over c minus s squared equals 1 over s minus c squared. Okay, so far so good. We had a g of t, and now we computed its uh, a Laplace transform capital G of s. That, what does this tell us? Well, we notice the following. If we have f of t equals t, this, this one is in our table, we know capital F of s equals 1 over s squared. We have done that before. Of course, we couldn't do it from first principles, but this one is also in our table. Now we observe that our new g of t equals e to the power ct times t equals e to the power ct times f. So it is related to our known f of t. And furthermore, we computed in this case our capital G of s, which equals 1 over s minus c squared, which is exactly uh, the capital F of S minus C. If you plug S minus C in here, you get uh, 1 over S minus C squared, which uh, gives us our G of S. So what do we observe? If uh, G of T equals T times e to the power CT, then capital G of S equals the F of S minus C. Well, is this true more general? It is true, of course, for this one example, but what happens more general? Now, for that we have a theory. Which says indeed, if our g of t equals some f of t times e to the power ct, then our capital G of S uh, can be found in terms of capital F. Uh, and then we have to plug in S minus C at the place where S was. So if we know our capital F, uh, we can immediately compute our capital G. Proof is actually rather straightforward and actually easier than this specific example which we did over here. So what's the proof? It's only one line. So what is capital G of S? So uh, 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 you plug in your G over here, which is f of t times e to the power ct, do the integration, uh, turn this again into one exponential. So now we have this expression over here and we are already done because what we see over here is the uh, Laplace transform of f, but then instead of putting an s here, as usual, you have to replace the s by s minus c. So that's exactly what you do. You have the Laplace transform 
of f, but instead of s, you put s minus c. So your capital G of s equals capital F of s minus c. So this, in principle, of course, allows you to take Laplace transforms. But it's much more useful to take inverse Laplace transforms. So if you have some function g of s, some new function, which you can uh, rewrite to a known function's capital F of s minus c, where c is some constant, then you can immediately transform back because you know your g of t is your f of t, which you know it, it is in your table, times e to the power ct. So that's a trick. So for example, second example, if you have a g of s, uh, this one, 1 over s squared minus 4s plus 5, and you want to transform back. Now, this function over here is not in your table. Uh, and if you do not know how to do the complex integration, so what to do? Fortunately, you can rewrite this g of s as an f of s minus c, as follows. You can complete the square, then you have a 1 over s minus 2 squared plus 1, and this is exactly capital F of s minus 2, where capital F of s equals 1 over s squared plus 1. And this capital F of s is indeed in your table, because if you transform it back, you get your f of t is just the sine of t. So this one you know. So And because you know the capital uh, f of s, you can also find back your g of t. Your g of t is then e to the power ct times f of t. f of t was sine of t. Uh, your c was 2. So your uh, inverse Laplace transform equals e to the power 2t times sine of t. So with this, with this method, uh, you can find a whole new set of inverse Laplace transforms if you are able to write your g of s as a function of s minus c where the capital F is in your table.